dig or not to dig? Well, anybody who submitted a video for this episode answered that question with dig. If in doubt, dig it out. It's always been my motto. Quite often, the good stuff will give the same signal as a very deep coin buried on edge or some great artifact sitting next to a lump of rusted metal. You've got to dig it out. Otherwise, you're missing lots of stuff. I remember when I first got back into metal detecting a couple of years ago, I met a fella called Gary, also known as Spartacus1 on YouTube. Great guy. He was explaining what he'd found and how many years he'd been doing it. And I remember just thinking, I'm never going to find the stuff he found. But he did tell me something. I can't remember exactly how it went, but it was maybe something like this. Oh, no tears. It's a waste of good suffering. Well, as I say, I can't remember exactly what he said. I don't think it was that. You never know. It might have been. But basically it was that, I, you know, I've only been doing it a few months when I met him. So therefore, I can't expect to have found anywhere near the find that he's found. Since then, I've found some reasonable stuff. But um, the collection's building all the time. And that's what it's all about. I'm in a metal detecting club and I've found stuff that some of the other lads haven't found. They've found quite a lot of stuff that I haven't found. But everybody finds different stuff. And in this series of videos, you're going to see that. There's loads of people sending videos of stuff that they've found that I know I'll never find. But there's also people posting videos of stuff that I've got pretty good chance of finding if I stick at it long enough. I know I've said this many times and I've said it in every episode, but Thank you again to everybody who took the time to make a short video for this episode. It is very much appreciated and I can't make these videos without your submissions. Now just before we jump into the videos I want to mention another couple of Facebook groups whose members have contributed to this video and they are firstly Metal Detecting I know I mentioned this last time, but there is another one called Metal Detecting. So, the link's below. And also, Digging History. Again, the link's below. They're both pretty well supported groups, but check them out. I'm sure they would love new members. So that said, on with the show, and welcome to part three. Evening all, my name's Ian from Worksop, UK. Uh, I've only been detecting for about 11 months. Uh, my best, best find to date would be my William III shilling. Have a look, you can see. Get some light on it. And that will find on pasture. Um, on my third trip out, as you can see, it's William III shilling, 1696, no mint mark, so it's royal mint. Uh, in beautiful condition, you can see a bit better. Reverse. Absolutely perfect condition. Found with my uh, laser rapier, and uh, and that's about it. Thanks. Hello, my name is Mike. Uh, my YouTube channel is Michael Swan 66 uh, United States. And uh, this is my entry for Pond Guru's uh, Finds Competition video entry. Uh, found this 14 karat gold nugget ring. It's the first gold find of 2012. Found it in a field laying right on top of the ground using the White's XLT. And it's one of my favorite finds of the year. Hi guys, Rob here from YouTube's Roaming Rob 97 channel. Another find here for today. It's a uh, token or coin of Robert Rakes. He was the publicizer of the Sunday School movement back in 1780. And this coin was struck 100 years later to commemorate him. And you can see on the back there, 1880. Uh, the coin's made of pewter. Uh, I found it at Farmland, six inches down, with the Garrett 80 Pro. Thank you. 
Hi folks, uh, Rich Biss here on YouTube. Uh, this is my find of the week. Uh, it is a 22 carat Indian gold uh, elephant good luck ring. Uh, although obviously it wasn't very lucky for them. Uh, it was found uh, three inches down uh, on pasture land using the e track. Uh, good luck, everybody, and speak to you all soon. Bye bye. This here is um, a Royal Australian Air Force hat pin. It was found on an American Army base within Australia in Queensland. Yeah, this one was pretty much on the surface. I think I dug about one or two inches, if that. And I found it with a CTX 3030 from Mine Lab. And if you'd like to check out my channel, it's John24 Gold One on YouTube. Hi, this is John from the John 316 UK. Uh, this is my entry for Worldwide Detecting Finds. I found this um, around about June time in the Stubbly Field. It's a Victorian pocket watch fob. Uh, maker's marks. It was made in Birmingham in 1876. And the maker's mark is William Walter Cashmore. Uh, at the time it was found with a Gareth Ace 250 and it was 3 inches down. Hope you like it. Now this next video, although it is a finds video, is a little bit different. This is a call back to a video in part 2 from Detectorus who showed us a Roman artifact. Spartacus 1 has also found something very very similar but it's part of something which casts a new light on it. Um, so it's either something very similar that was copied from an earlier design or it's a semi-complete artifact which explains what it was. So check this out and make up your own mind. But it's pretty interesting. Well, Detectorus, this is what your mystery find is. It's not a button that we all thought it might be, but a secret furniture lock or casket lock dating from the 1690s to 1750s, judging by the style of the metalwork. Well, I hope this has been of interest to everybody. And I hope it helps identify those strange type button objects that detectorists in England tend to come across. And at least the next time you get one, you'll know what it is or what it's been off. So happy hunting to you all. And thanks for producing this worldwide metal detecting finds video series Pon Guru. It's been of great use and it's always nice to see what other people's finding around the world. Thanks a lot. All the best. Happy hunting. My name is Brandon. This is my entry for Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds, and my channel name is The Brandon 316 UK. I filmed this on Saturday. It is an old horse brass that horses had on their leather straps. It was four to five inches um, deep, found in um, a grassy field or pasture with a Garrett Ace 250. Just show you there. So, thanks for watching. Alors, un indice auquel d'habitude je ne creuse pas, sur lequel je ne creuse pas, c'était il y a 40. Et puis là, je sais pas, en fait, euh, j'ai quand même eu envie, donc j'ai creusé. Et donc, euh, c'est ça comme maintenant, ça. Oh non. Oh non. <rire> Attendez, là c'est un peu gros, là. C'est pas une monnaie en or quand même. Oh là 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 là. Alors là, mes amis. Bon, 
I turned it over and I thought, well, two of them. And I thought, hang on a minute. There's one, two, three, four of them all stuck together. Oh, you know, pretty good. Um, no doubt about that. It's got an L etched on it. And I polished the other side. And what did I get? I got an X and an M. And uh, several other little circular things. Going. Thanks for watching. I'm not sure how well you can pick that out, but at one point this would have been gilded with gold. There's just a little bit of gilding next to the head. And this is quite a nice example of a snake belt fastener. I found this, it was very shallow, near my home in a ploughed field, with the Garrett Ace 150, which is my first detector. And my son was with me when we found it and we were both pretty excited because we could still see little traces of gold on it. And It's such a, a beautiful little artefact that we both got excited and that was a moment that we shared. This one's most likely Georgian. Mid 1700s to early 1800s. Hello everyone, my name's Wayne. My YouTube name is Disaster, and uh, this is the, my best find so far, which happens to be a Persian gold coin from the late 1700s. Found this with the Technetics Omega 8000. It's about six to seven inches down, and uh, this was found in February last year, 2012. Pop it over, show you the other side. As you can see, it's got fantastic detail on there. Not very big, but that's my find. Thanks for watching. So, that was another pretty fantastic video, I think. And that's not me blowing my own trumpet, I generally do a terrible job of editing. It was a brilliant video because of the great finds and also what it meant to the people that found those things and what those finds meant to the people that initially lost them often hundreds of years ago. One last request, if you're watching this video and you've enjoyed it, please check out the channels of the people who've submitted videos for this episode. They'd appreciate it. I would appreciate it as well. It's given thanks back to them. After all, they make this video possible. Um, Chances are they've got quite a lot of good videos on their channel. I know most of them have. So check them out. Subscribe to them also. They will definitely have more videos to come. Why do I always seem to have the light shining on my baldy head? I'll give you a taste of this, you scumbag.